Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to San Francisco, everybody. We're here at VMworld 2014, we're at Moscone South, just inside the lobby to the right, come by, say hello, love to see you. So this is the fifth year for theCUBE at VMworld, and we've seen the transformation of VMware from what used to be called the software mainframe, the marketing guys got a hold of that term, and have really evolved it into the software-defined data center. And Stu and I are really excited to have Finney Gill on. Uh, he is the chief architect at Nutanix, Hot company, one that we introduced you to quite some time ago, and uh, we've been following the ascendancy of Nutanix. Benny, welcome to theCUBE, good to have you. Thank you, same here. So, a lot of talk about convergence, hyper-convergence, software-defined, you guys got ahead of that whole curve. Yep. Uh, we saw some announcements today, everybody's trying to parse through those and understand them. Give us the update on Nutanix, and then we'll get into the sort of architecture and the technical piece, because you essentially are the de facto CTO of the company, so please. So, um, I mean, we have come a long way since we started. I mean, uh, early on we were talking about converging the hardware, so the storage hardware and the server hardware and why converging them makes sense. There were many uh, people who thought, you know, that may not work, you know, because the compute side and the storage side have different refresh cycles and all of that. So we have gone through all of that. Now the entire world understands why convergence is a good thing, why server side flash is a good thing. Now we're talking more about web scale. You know, once you actually take uh, monolithic uh, SAN and NAS boxes and the capabilities and uh, sprinkle that capability into hundreds of servers, what you have to now grapple with is the scale at which the storage functions have to be developed. And that's the web scale movement that you know, we are at the forefront of. Yeah, Stu and I have been tracking, and you know, folks at Wikibon, the, the whole hyperscale, Stu, piece bleeding into the enterprise. It's something that you've covered ex extensively. You've written about it, obviously you've written about server SAN. You know, so it's, it's happening. Yeah, Dave, and uh, you know, when I joined Wikibon, you know, I came from a heavy enterprise focus and you know, very different architectural design from the web scale guys, so um, really exciting when you get to talk to you know, James Hamilton from Amazon, talk to you know, Facebook, what they're doing with open compute. Um, and you know, while Nutanix actually takes some arrows from the competition because they say, oh, this web scale thing is nothing but a bunch of marketing. But, you know, Benny, I'm wondering if you, you can you know, share with the, the folks, you know, your team, you know, I've talked to guys uh, in your organization that are former Facebook and Google architects, um, you know, worked on some you know, pretty amazing technologies at those really big companies yeah, absolutely. and are helping bring those uh, to the Nutanix uh, portfolio. Right, I mean, so what we have done is uh, instead of tackling just the storage problem uh, at the get-go, what we have said is let's take a pause and see how have the web scale companies evolved the data center. So if you look at what they did, you know, they did not start off with a NetApp or an EMC or NAS or Sandbox. What they said is that they need massive scale. And to do that, fundamentally, first they did is they changed the storage architecture. So that means you converge the storage piece and the compute piece. The way they did that though is they shipped the compute piece to where the storage lied. And that is the invention of big data, that's the invention of MySQL, that's the invention of MapReduce and all of that. All that goodness, does not directly apply to enterprise uh, data center because there's a lot of legacy applications that need POSIX interface, a lot of uh, applications that still need the notion of a virtual machine. So we took those web scale concepts and said, first we will build a web scale foundation on which now you have strong consistency. That's why we had to delve into multi-pack source that was distributed. We had to build MapReduce from ground up that would look at your metadata and then give you a lot of the features of you know, DDoop, Snapshot, and all that. And then we said, we have this web scale foundation that will get rid of silos in your data center, and now we build storage on top, right? And that's what 
you know, we have done with the employees that have come from, you know, these various backgrounds that bring that mindset and the religion of web scale to us. Yeah, so, so Benny, the, the, the other thing I want to let you address is, you know, th those, those really big companies, a lot of times they're talking about a single custom application, yeah, exactly. or maybe a handful of applications, right. plus the enterprise is usually, I mean, dozens or hundreds of applications. Yeah. So why is, why is the architecture still applicable when, when I get away from a single app to go to, you know, virtualization and, and kind of the typical enterprise environment? So yes, so the, it's, it's, it's not about the architecture, it's about the discipline. So I'll tell you what, in a, if you want to do one thing right and get web scale, is follow the scale out principle. The scale out principle says that if you have a service running on a given node, that service should use resources that are proportional to the size of the node and not proportional to the size of the cluster, right? So as you're increasing the size of your cluster, the services should not become hotspots and bottlenecks. And that fundamental religion is what is important. Now you say, okay, I understand that, how do I keep metadata? And suddenly your answer would be that you need no SQL, you need MapReduce. And so those are the things that we learn from the big guys, not necessarily exactly their application stack and how they build it, right? Uh, and then we say, enterprise is a complex environment, right? And great companies like VMware have created a lot of solutions around that. So how do you take the goodness of VMware, goodness of Microsoft and KVM ecosystem, and also going forward into the cloud, and provide web scale to those environments in a seamless way? You know, when you put Nutanix on a box, it just works. You don't have to uh, do anything special on the hypervisor. So that's the key, is the, the, the ability to scale out seamlessly. You say seamlessly, everybody, when I hear seamlessly, I think, oh, I can add capacity, and, and not take any downtime, yeah. and not take any application disruption. But there are architectures, I, I, I won't name them right now in the queue, but I might later, um, where the customers have said, well, yeah, it's scale out, but when I scale out, I take a, 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 some downtime, or I take disruption, or I have to go through hoops. I presume that's not the case with Nutanix, but I want to push on that a little bit. I mean, philosophically, right. that to me is not really seamless <laughs> scale out. What's your take yeah. on that? I mean, again, if you look at uh, Google, if they add a new node, <laughs> Google doesn't take a downtime. I mean, right. so those, those, <laughs> those are fundamental uh, things that, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer to, you know, uh, make sure that you uh, enable that. In fact, uh, we focus a lot of, um, on a single click upgrades for an entire cluster, no matter how large it is. You know, upgrading not just the, uh, our software stack, but also upgrading things in our ecosystem, like the hypervisor, you know, the device firmware and stuff like that in the, in the same way. And um, that is, you know, the fundamental tenet around uh, web scale is making sure that there are no silos because as, as when you have brought convergence into the data center, what you have to understand that is you don't have a single monolith that everybody can point to and get to the data. Now you have scattered that all over your data center and you better be sure you're not creating silos around that. Because the biggest pain point in the data center is not about just adding nodes necessarily, it's about agility, right? So I have a virtual machine running here, an application, I want to move it from one place in the data center to the other. Well, in VMware you can just click on the VM and do vMotion, you're done. Well, not really, what if this virtual machine had 10 terabytes of data sitting here and now that's sitting in a different silo. And silos could be performance silos, capability silos, hardware silos. Protection silos. You know, protection yeah. silos, all sorts of silos. And then you say, okay, the data is sitting there, my, my application needs to go to the other end of the data center, what do I need to do? You need to implement fine-grained data migration, right? And that's where the complexity of a metadata layer, you know, that's built on NoSQL, you know, just like Cassandra. That enables us to do it on a fine-grained level. The hot working set follows the virtual machine, not just within a data center, but also when the VM moves or the application moves to a different data center. You know, doing deduplication, compression at a fine-grained level across data centers and clouds. That dissolves the silo uh, si silos in the data center. Yeah, we know we've done studies at Wikibon that quantified the cost of migration, an example, you know, cost of migrating a storage array well north of $50,000, you know, 20 plus percent right. of, the, of the original cost yeah. of the array. So, based on what you just said, I'm presuming that you're able to take that cost down dramatically. Yeah, so if, if you're running on the Nutanix uh, virtual computing platform and you're moving things around, 
you don't have to think twice. There is no cost, there is no planning you need to do. Right? Just do it. Just do it. Do what you want to do. Yeah, and I mean, Dave, Dave when, we, when we did the server saying architecture, you know, David Floyer said, right, taking out that migration cost is one of the key tenets of server saying, and of course, Nutanix is a great example right. uh, of that kind of architect. Benny, uh, you, you talked about the cloud a couple of times. When, you know, when I first to talked to Nutanix, you guys were, you know, VMware. It was the environment that you worked on. Right. Um, you guys announced something, I believe it's called Cloud Connect, yep. uh, relatively recently. Can you talk a little bit about that and how do you extend from uh, kind of the, the, the data center beyond the individual data center to the cloud? And, and, and right. what did you guys so have again, to do it, for that? So again, it comes back to solving silos, right? So now today we have a divide between the public cloud and the private cloud that is growing. What the enterprise admin wants to do is, uh, I want to move applications from my private cloud to the public cloud, I want to burst my applications into the cloud space. And also some amount of freedom of choice, you know, they want to go to Amazon, they want to go to Azure, and stuff like that. So, what we have done is, you know, taken our architecture, our software, and put it on EC2. So now we have our controller virtual machine running on EC2 and providing the same services as it provides in the private data center. Again, the, the reason we can do it is because we don't have a hardware crutch, and it runs beautifully on Amazon as well. So now, uh, currently we put the uh, cold and old data onto Amazon, but going forward, it's about moving workloads from one location to the other and all seamlessly. Yeah, so, I, I mean, at this show, we've seen uh, some of the challenges that VMware is having with competition. You know, it, it, it's you know, a multi-hypervisor world in many ways. Microsoft's been, uh, you know, gaining share. Red Hat's doing, right. you know, you know right. well in their spaces. Uh, you know, Amazon and, uh, you know, Azure, of course, in the public cloud. And, and then there's the, the big question mark, things like Docker and containers. Right. Um, from kind of an architectural standpoint and what you're looking at, how, how, how is Nutanix positioned for, you know, multi-cloud, multi-hypervisor, right, right. you know, VM container, bare metal world? Uh, you know, are, are you guys a VM only, or, you know, how, how does your architecture span? So, I mean, if you look at uh, our intellectual property, it's all in software, right? Now it's a question of how do you package that software? I mean, you can package it in terms of a virtual machine, you can package it in a bunch of processes running in a C group uh, on bare metal, I mean, nothing stops us from taking our software and run it on a, a laptop, for example, or, or in a container in a docker on bare metal. Um, what we want to do is focus on the enterprise pain points, right? And, and if uh, VMware is at uh, running in a lot of uh, servers and the, our customers are running VMware, so that's where we provide our value. And now we have seen the shift from VMware to Hyper-V and the need for open source uh, KVM. So we have provided our functionality there and there's no reason we can't uh, go to Docker as well. All right, so, so Benny, I, I know we're running short on time here. You yeah. know, you came from IBM research. Yeah. I mean, IBM got over 100 years of creating some of you know, the, the best innovations Absolutely. You know, in the yeah. IT industry. I mean, you know, there's way too many to name. Uh, you know, I, I worked for Lucent uh, you know, for a bunch of years back in the 90s. Bell Labs is one I always you know, greatly respected being an engineer uh, at, at training. Um, you know, what, what did you learn working for research that you, you've brought to Nutanix? How do you guys kind of look at the future and look at the research that you guys are doing? Yeah, I mean, uh, so one of the main things to learn from research is you need to empower engineers, empower technical leaders with the ability to fail, right? So the permission to fail is the recipe to succeed, right? So fundamentally, you have to understand that there are hundreds of startups out there that want to build a Nutanix killer now, right? Now they have the permission to fail. Most of them would fail and some of them would succeed. How do you bring that culture into the company as a first class citizen and say, everybody is allowed to make, take big bets, take risks, and make it work in a, as if it's a research organization. And that's what, you know, what keeps me up at night to make sure that that culture is what we maintain as we are growing, doubling every year. So I wonder, Benny, if we could, maybe a, sort of one last touch point. Um, how should we think about the Evo rail? Everybody's talking about, oh, this is, kind of going after Nutanix and, and others. So we had Sam uh, from Dell on this morning. He's like, no, 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 very complimentary. Nutanix is like I.O. killer. You know, they're unbelievable at I.O. and we're positioning. So how should we, what's Nutanix's point of view on this rail announcement? So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very good thing for us, actually. Uh, it's a great validation for what we have been talking to our customers. We've been telling customers, look, you need a control plane uh, that is different from the control plane you're used to. Uh, a lot of the 
uh, things around analytics, about VM management, need a different look at it. Uh, so we have built Nutanix Prism UI, you know, earlier this year we uh, announced uh, VM analytics, so we look at the health, you know, CPU, memory, network, storage, layer for virtual machines. All of that now becomes easy for us to actually uh, tell the customers, look, you know, you've got to be open to uh, a new control plane, and by the way, this control plane is going to be the same web scale as, as you're used to on the data plane from Nutanix. Awesome, hyperscale coming into the enterprise, you guys are making it happen. Vinny Gill, thanks very much for coming on to theCUBE, appreciate it. Yeah, thank All right, you, keep Dave. it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next segment right after this. This is theCUBE, we're live from VMworld 2014.